a very warm good evening guys so once again back from biopoint stream the world of bio with yet another session from living world lecture number 2 for the sweet biopoint jwala batch let's upgrade with biopoint for the sweet need 2023 yes so hope you all are perfectly ready can we move on yes rachit yes vismaya yes ayo squad yes so with the full josh let's move on with today's session on living wall lecture number 2 for the sweet bio point jwala batch yes so introducing the bio point jwala batch right in front of you where you have the regular sessions for need 2023 as well as for a preparation in both which question vismaya which question haven't received yet anything i haven't received any message anything yes bala subramanya question number 5 which one of the study i hope you have sent it to abhi sir can you uh, if possible please re repeat that yes so let's move on with today's session and now i am reminding you to join the telegram group right now where you have the daily session updates polls and where you can interact with me the direct link to join the telegram group is given there in the description box and that is e.me/need_biopoint yes okay so everyone hope you all are ready yes if ready give me thumbs up on the screen if you all are ready for today's session give me thumbs up on the screen come on be fast Yes, Miss Maya, it's okay. You are taking PCMB because taking PCMB has a vast varieties of job opportunities. If you are not, uh, just imagine that if you are not getting a job that you desired at most, more uh, what another jobs with more than the salary of the jobs that you desired will be there in PCMB because you can write both the job op opportunities that is available when you are taking PCM and. Uh, pcb such a vast varieties of job opportunities will be there if you are taking pcmp and you can attend almost all the examination if you are taking such an stream okay yes so as we have discussed in the very first lecture we have divided we have planned to divide the lecture into three one what is living second one diversity in living world and taxonomic categories and third one taxonomic eight yes so for our very first lecture we have completed successfully and hope each and every topic is clear yes and one question that vishma has asked and who is this ravinder kumar if you are starting to spam it you will be made time out okay fine so we have successfully completed living world and here you have one question right uh, doubt by vismaya vismaya if you just ask it surely we will clear that or else uh before ending this session i will contact yes vismaya sir can you explain metabolism in simple way word sure we'll do it so now we are going to do the two topics diversity in living worlds and taxonomic categories so we are moving on to today's session so before going on to that do hit the like button do share it with your friends and do subscribe bio point stream the world of bio what are the twin characteristics of growth yes okay we will do it we will uh, check it and we will just have a revision on the topic that we uh, that we have learned in the past lecture okay so now we are going to start with a new topic that is the diversity in living world if anyone is new to this session can directly enter this because it is completely different from the topic that we have learned in the previous lecture okay everyone 
Lucifer, Balasubramanian, Devish, Rachid, everyone is here. Vismaya is active. So, in the last lecture, what happened is that due to network issues, voice crack was there and it was not perfectly fine. And now we are going to start it again. We have just removed that from the YouTube and now we are going to start it again with the other topic, diversity in living world. So what is this biodiversity? As you all know, there are different number of organisms and there are most varieties, different types of organisms. For example, if you are taking an example of a fish. Fish. What in case of fish? There are different and different types of fishes, right? Yeah, what? Whether in shape or whether in size or whether in their internal structures, whether in their color, whether in their habitats, whether they, where, where they are living in salty water, okay, whether they are living in seas or whether they are uh, living in ponds. Like that, they differ from each and every one, those fishes, right? This is a very basic example. So, such a different types and number of organisms present on an earth is known as biodiversity. So, very important definition of biodiversity. The different types, number and types of organisms present in the earth. It is known as biodiversity. Is it clear? Is it clear? And how they differ? As we have discussed, they differ in morphology. Yes, Fofa. Yes, size, color, anatomy, habitats and habits. So what is this morphology? How they differ in their morphology? Just they differ in their morphology by uh, what? Simply changing their shape. And their relation with the environment. Relation with the surrounding environment. All this was just an external features is known as what? Morphology. Then differs in their size, color and anatomy. What is this anatomy? Anatomy refers to the internal structure. And anybody comment me right now. What is meant by habitats? What is meant by habitats? So internal structure is known as anatomy and the difference in their relation with yes difference in their relation with uh, their environment size color habitats and habits and anatomy what is anatomy it is internal structure anatomy means internal their internal structures differs in their internal structures each and every organisms for example this if you take in case of humans and another organism, fishes, is their internal structure same? No, right? Their internal structures are entirely different. So none is active and no one is commenting what is habitat. Habitat refers to the surrounding in which these organisms are living. So what is the habitat of a fish? It is water, right? The water surrounding area in which an organism lives is known as its habitat. Okay. So hope it's well, the very first slide is clear. What is biodiversity and how it is applicable? That is, it is differing in their morphology, size, color, anatomy, habitats and habits. Is it okay? Yes, fine. So as described by IUCN, that is International Union for Conservation of Natural Resources. It's a specific university that is a union of different universities and as described by them the count of organisms in the human uh, in the earth is 1.7 to 1.8 million so what is iucn international 
so according to uh, what IUC and that is International Union for Conservation of natural resources i'm trying to write it maximum neatly Okay, so international according to International Union for Conservation of Natural Resources, the number of species described as one point seven to 1.8 million yes 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 Voices oh, breaking. Is everything clear? Is it fine, guys? Is it fine, guys? Is the audio clear right now? Yes. So can we continue here, right? We can continue here, right? Okay, fine. So as per IUCN, that is International Union for Conservation of Natural Resources. That is the full form of IUCN. Okay, so according to IUCN, the number of species, that is the number of organisms, found in the earth is 1.7 to 1.8 million. 1.7, only this thing that you have to learn from this slide and the full, that this IUCN. Rest is not at all important. Just don't look over to that. 
that is the count of animal species and count of insect and plants no need of that only the biodiversity range as per your ncrt and i uh, in uh, what this, about this iucn okay so if it's clear till now give me hearts on the screen give me hearts on the screen then only we can move to the next topic that is systematics systematics yes ishga come on vismaya bal subramanian yes lucifer okay fine so now let's move on with the next topic that is systematics so guys as we know that biology chemistry physics all these are just branches of bio uh, branches of science right physics chemistry biology all these are branches of science in the same way systematics also is a branch of science science is a vast and wide field right so such a from that such a science we have a branch called systematics and what is this systematics it is a greek word systema that is meaning order or sequence order or sequence the word systema means order or sequence and there is another branch of science known as taxonomy that we are going to learn in the next slide very next slide that is taxonomy and this systematics is often interchangeable with taxonomy that is the definition or what is meant by systematics is almost equal to that of what is meant by taxonomy what is meant by systematics is almost equal to what is meant by taxonomy so it is often interchangeable with each other so what is then systematics is it is the relationship of organism with each other that is a comparative relationship comparative relationship that is comparing from one organism to another such a relationship and their evolutionary history evolutionary history yes systematics yes it's a latin word yes is oh my god very sorry very sorry very sorry systematics uh, the systema is a latin word which means order or sequence very sorry guys yes nisha thank you for correcting it right now or else it will be a great mistake from my part okay fine so the systematics is a comparative and evolutionary relationship between organism such a branch of science is known as systematics and the basic things that are so sir if they ask definition of systematics can we write the definition of taxonomy the only thing that you have to note in class 11th and 12 is that the very basic thing is that what you have to write from the question is the exact statement given there in the ncrt exact statement should be copied from the ncrt slight moderation slight differences can be made in that part okay that's what from class 11th and 12th ncrt part basics of systematics there are some basic parts from systematics and that is the very first step of systematics is the description of an organism if we are identifying when we are getting an organism first we have to have a description on that and after that identification we should identify which organism is that which is the organism first we should have a description that is whether it's color it's uh, 
morphological appearance we cannot analyze an internal that is an anatomical appearance just by seeing an organism okay we cannot analyze an organism by just by seeing its morphological uh, anatomic uh, what uh we cannot analyze anatomical structure just by seeing an organism and uh, therefore just describing an organism by morphological means that is by external appearances first we see, when we see an organism we will just say that it was such a such in color for example it was brown in color it has two uh, what wings it has two wings it has eight limbs like that if we are saying like that that's a basic description for an organism and after that we will move in detail with the identification we will just move on with that organism and we will just closely analyze what that organism is and after that we will classify that organism into different different groups okay into different different groups that is whether it is belonging to this group that is kingdom plant without those topic about kingdoms and phylums all those things will be coming under the topic biological classification that is the very second chapter and animal kingdom so next chapter that i am going to complete is biological classification and the other one that is abiza is going to complete is animal kingdom soon he will be starting that after completing let after me completing this living world is it clear till now that is the very basic two steps is me i will repeat the definition of systematics i will repeat it after describing this completely or otherwise all the things will be getting messed up is it clear the basics of systematic steps yes ishiga yes vismaya balasubramanian lucifer devish rachit Fine. Okay. So the third step is classification. As we have discussed, we will classify it into a specific group. After identification, yes, Nisha, classify it into a specific group. Yes, sure. We will. Uh, what I will explain it. First, we are moving on with the steps of systematics. Okay. In the same way, we have the steps in taxonomy too. okay we have the steps in taxonomy too like that the same way first we are going to study the steps in systematics the very first step is description the very first step is description that is for example for example anyone anyone i need one person to answer my question right now a simple question just to give an example very simple question that is anyone comment the name of a simple organism that we can see very usually often we see that organism comment one organism like that house fly or mosquito or cockroach anything like that anyone comment one name fast be fast be fast we should complete it before 515 or dog okay fine okay here one person that is vismaya is going to just describe about this systematics right now to whom another person come in your name to take you as an experimental organism come in your name first who comes your name first will be taken yes come on this man want to explain this to someone who is that someone come on Come on, come on, come on! Okay, now now you are ready. So I will be taking myself as an experimental organism. So, Vishma is just seeing a dog right in front of you. Okay, she doesn't know what that organism is. Okay, she doesn't know what that organism is. whether that is a dog or a cat or anything she just sees an organism 
right in front of her but she doesn't know what that is okay so first after seeing that she is just coming right to me and seeing that i have seen such an organism it is black in color it has such a pointed and sharp eyes it has certain specific teeth like that just an analyzation by its morphological appearance or an external appearance right this is how you explain unknown things to someone for example if you see strangers you will see that they have such a long hair they wear in this much color color shades that is whether black or white or brown or medium shades like that you will be explaining is it clear this is the basic descri uh, description of an organism right is it clear is it clear yes bal subramanian ishiga nisha lucifer everyone yes okay fine so now we have to identify what the organism is so she has given me a basic description about that and after that what i am going to do is i have to identify i have to answer her query right answer her question what that organism is so after hearing all these things we will just have an idea in our mind or after seeing the organism after myself seeing the organism i will see i have an idea and i will just identify that organism into specific name that is whether it is a dog that she has seen identifying that organism is a dog right clear that is what identification is next we are moving on with the third step that is classification so after identifying this organism as a dog we should classify it into specific group right yes thank you happy to glad to hear that you have understood what i am teaching okay fine so we should classify that into a specific group that is into a we are not going into minute details of the group we are just having an overall analyzation that is it's an animal kingdom animalia it's a specific group right we are analyzing it as an animal animalia is a group right so after analyzing it into or after classifying it into a specific group we will just give you give it scientific name since we have analyzed classified it into group surely we can give it nomenclature that is a scientific name so about nomenclature and scientific names we will learn in the upcoming slides today itself clear perfectly clear about the steps of tax uh, systematics if it's clear it will be very easy for you to understand taxonomy too yes others olive is mes commenting come on yes nisha fine so if it's perfectly clear and one question that vishma was asked is the definition of systematics systematics is a branch of science if you need you can write it okay if you need you can write it nomenclature we will discuss it it's just naming of an organism scientific naming of an organism is meant by nomenclature that we will discuss it in today itself okay so what is this the what systematics definition systematic is a branch of science that deals with that deals with comparative and evolutionary relationship of organisms branch of science that deals with comparative and evolutionary relationship of organisms okay any doubts with the definition of systematics branch of science that deals with the comparative and evolutionary relationship between organisms evolution evolutionary relationship means as you all know from the very basic standard you will be having a doubt that you will be see not a doubt you will be seeing a picture that 
some monkeys are there right some monkeys are there just in front of just in back of a fully developed human right so like uh, somebody asked why all the why these monkeys are just following this human this human this fully developed human or we itself is just developed or is just an evolutionary part we are just modified from this monkeys or apes apes the correct term is apes it is a specific organism from which we the humans are developed that is how evolutionary relationship if you take the evolutionary evolution of this human it's this apes very beginning apes right clear yes exactly that's what i need fine so now as we have said we are moving on with taxonomy okay taxonomy is the study of identification classification and nomenclature of organisms identification classification and nomenclature has we learned have we learned these steps anywhere before identification classification and nomenclature have we learned it before yes right we have learned it in the steps of systematics so what that's what taxonomy is it is a study of identification classification and nomenclature of organisms so from this three terms identification classification and nomenclature only a single term is there as a doubt for you that is nomenclature that we will cover it today itself okay so a scientist called plato he started to discover he started to uh, what discover this branch of science called taxonomy later on later on another scientist that is aristotle again developed added further information to this branch of science that is taxonomy later on the three of rastes that is the father of botany he just added some more information from the plant parts to this taxonomy okay and after that a scientist known as linnaeus have you heard about this linnaeus carl linnaeus carl linnaeus he is regarded as the father of taxonomy finally he concluded all these things that is about plants and animals and everything together and he just made this was branch of science that is taxonomy fine so linnaeus is the father of taxonomy fine and this taxonomy is based on external and internal structure so as i have told you what is this term for external structure what is the term for external structure what is the term for internal structure we have discussed the term for internal structure as anatomy and external structure as morphology yes exactly sha then another thing is structure of a cell taxonomy involves another uh, what criteria called the structure of a cell that is whether you have minute details of a structure of a cell right that whether it from that we can identify whether it is plant cell or an animal cell whether it can be classified as a plant group or an animal group right that is of the presence of plastids large vacuole all these things just forms this basis of structure of cell for grouping or for classification and after that eco ecological information that is their habits and habitats where in which surrounding they are living in what are all their what are all their habits that is which food is they are they eating all these things is their ecological information is that clear is that clear all about taxonomy is that clear all about taxonomy each and after each and every slide we are moving on to bit and bit complex parts so if it's very clear come and me right now yes so now right now i am asking you one question what is the very first step of taxonomy 
which is the first step of taxonomy. Which is the first step of taxonomy? Come at me fast. Yes, identification. Yes, still what we have learned, we have learned that identification as the basic process of taxonomy. Moving on to further details, let me explain that the first step of taxonomy is characterization. That is understanding the characters of an organism. As we have discussed in terms of systematics as description. Description is the first step in systematics, right? The other term used in taxonomy is characterization. That is understanding of characters of organisms. That is their external and internal structure, uh, structure of cell and developmental process. Is it clear? These are four options. That is characterization, identification, classification, and nomenclature. From these, identify the very first step of taxonomy. If such a question is asked, it is characterization. If characterization is not given in the option, what is the answer? If from these three, from, from identification, classification, and nomenclature, from these three, one, two, and three, come on, come in me right now, the very first step of tax on, uh, tax on me. From identification, classification, and nomenclature, which is the first step in taxonomy? Be fast. We have a lot of topics to be covered today, and we have 10 questions to discuss. It. Yes, one that is identification. Exactly, Barsudramanian. So, hope it's clear. As we have discussed, correct description of organism prior to nomenclature that is identifying an organism is known as identification. Classify grouping of organisms into different categories based on their similarities and differences between certain organisms is known as classification and nomenclature that is scientific naming as we have discussed in taxonomy right next we are moving on to the very important topic taxonomical hierarchy is the way for, uh, first topic that we have learned diversity in living clear perfectly clear we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and another ten slides of questions left to complete today. Yes, I will show it. Yes, I will show it. So now we have perfectly completed this diversity in living world too. Okay. So now I'm moving on with taxonomical hierarchy. And guys, don't worry, don't worry. If you are not taking screenshot, also don't worry. After completing one more lecture, that is the last and final lecture of very detailed lecture, that is taxonomical eight. I will be providing PDF of this entire slides and MCQs for you, right in the group. And this description box will be updated, including this PDF, Google Drive PDF. Okay. Have you done it? Fine. So let me move on with hierarchy of classification. And that is the very first hierarchy, as you all know, each and every members are just with similar characteristics that can interbreed among themselves. What is meant by interbreed am among themselves? That can have a relation between themselves and produce offspring of their own kind. Such members with similar characters and can interbreed among themselves. That is, only humans and humans can interbreed among themselves. That is, only males and females can interbreed among themselves. And only dogs and dogs can interbreed among themselves. Can dogs and cats interbreed among themselves? No. Artificial interbreeding uh, can be done. That is, female horse and male uh, donkey. We have learned, right? So such artificial breeding can be done or else natural interbreed only occurs with same species. So such similar members of similar characteristics together form the very first taxonomical hierarchy called species. Can these slides be used as nodes? Sure. I have included very correct points. From my part, I have included very correct points in these slides. 
so if there is any wrong things in this slide i will correct it while i'm teaching if i am not correcting you can perfectly analyze that this is a perfect slide to make you up to make perfect notes yes mules exactly this ma'am so like that nomenclature before moving on with this i have to explain nomenclature to you right you don't know nomenclature right so what is this nomenclature listen very carefully what this nomenclature is nomenclature refers to naming of an organism naming of an organism is what meant by nomenclature is because for example from different and different languages the term mango differs from different and different languages in english it is mango in malayalam it's different in hindi it's another different right in tamil it's another it's exactly different so differs from different and different place so for easier communication for better communication we have included a system of scientific naming scientific naming okay we have included a system of scientific naming and this scientific naming system of scientific naming is known as nomenclature i don't know whether we can complete the everything today anyway we will do it try to do it okay so this system of scientific naming is known as nomenclature and this nomenclature is proposed by very important very important the system of nomenclature is proposed by a scientist known as casper bauhen it is not there i hope it's not there in the ncrt Casper Bauhen he proposed the system of scientific naming or nomenclature he said that he said that uh, this names of this organisms are varying from place to place so in order to have an easier communication we need such a system of scientific naming and that is known as nomenclature so he just said that and he just said that through his book in which book he said that in a book called pinax pinax p i n a x casper bohen you need the spelling of casper bohen i will just type it casper bohen and in its book that is pinax both the name of the book and the scientist is given there in the chat box okay so he just proposed that we need such a naming and who established it who established it officially so this by bi naming biological naming or scientific naming was established by a scientist known as we have described him and the father of taxonomy carl linnaeus Carl Linnaeus established this system of naming. Okay, so Caspar Bohan just proposed the system of naming in his book Pinax, and who established it? It was established by Carl Linnaeus. Is it clear? Is it clear till now? So that we will move with the next topic of classification of nomenclature. come on yes fine so nomenclature can be classified into two types one is binomial nomenclature what is meant by the term by bi? binomial that is by bi means what two right by refers to two 
so a system comprising of two names for an organism a system comprising of two names it is known as binomial nomenclature and the second type is trinomial nomenclature trinomial nomenclature and that is comprising of three names and usually we use the term we use the system of binomial nomenclature and who established or who proposed this system of binomial nomenclature system of binomial nomenclature was proposed by carl linnaeus okay nomenclature was proposed by casper bohen nomenclature was established by carl linnaeus binomial nomenclature was proposed or established by carl linnaeus and trinomial nomenclature was established or proposed by a scientist known as lamarck lamarck i know it's a bit confusing i know it's a bit confusing anyway this is how the first chapter of biology is the very symbol now you will see it a bit confusing because you are just starting only right after moving on to further lectures you will find this chapter is the very most easiest chapter for from biology plus one and plus two this is the most easiest chapter because it contains no further detailed topics just an outline of all the topics is an introductory part and at least minimum four marks question will be asked a one question will be asked in the neat examination okay so binomial nomenclature proposed or established by carl linnaeus and trinomial nomenclature by a science of class 11 tough no have to say yes no it's not at all tough science of class 11 is not at all tough in your minds what why you have you are thinking it as tough as that in your minds by hearing the words of someone it's just injected right directly to your mind that science is uh, class 11th and class 12th is difficult it is one of the most important point yes it's one of the most important point but it's not at all difficult we are just enjoying and learning what is difficult when you have entered 10th standard have you remembered that everyone said class 10th is tough compared to other classes in the same way this class 11th and 12th is also very easy one thing that you have to follow is you have to practice questions have to be thoroughly touched with ncert okay if you are practicing this daily if you are practicing is it practicing it regularly that is when you are in your school when your uh, school uh, class are starting in your school when a topic is taught in a day and if you are studying it up to daily if you are keeping no topics as a uh, 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 no topics left to study later i assure you that you will be one of the top uh, for class 11th and 12th because if we keep it pending surely it will be a great difficulty for you because this is this is how class 11th and 12th is if you are just keeping it at least one day if you know that if uh exactly which my class 9th and class 11th is almost comparable and class 10th and class 12th is almost comparable because the genetics topic heredity and evolution in your class 10th and this in your class 12th we have principles of inheritance and molecular base of inheritance all these are just compared connected okay so mango as we have described as an example mango right the scientific name for mango is mangifera indica this is the scientific name of mango okay so let's discuss that mm. 
So binomial nomenclature refers to the how the species are named. The name of a species is done by two words that is a genus name and a spe species description. So what is this genus? What is this genus? Closely related species is known as genus. Closely related species is known as genus. A collection of species with same characteristics is known as genus. And this genus and species together constitute a scientific name that is biological nomen, binomial nomenclature or biological nomenclature. Okay. Okay, so the rules that are used by writing binomial, binomial nomenclature is that there are two names, right? There are two words, Mangifera indica, as given there in the chat box, if you have any doubt in spelling. Mangifera indica, it is a scientific name of Manco. They should be separately written and separately underlined when handwritten. When handwritten, Mangifera and indica should be separately underlined that is two words should be underlined separately and the first word that is mangifera m first letter of the first word that is m should be capital m should be capital and the species first letter of the species name indica i should be small letter is it clear is it clear all binomial uh, binomial names or biological names are Latinized or Greek words. Just ignore this term Greek words. All binomial nomenclature or scientific names are Latin words. Yes. So if two names that is, for example, in case of humans, that is Homo sapiens. It is a scientific name of humans, Homo sapiens. They should be separately underlined. And the very first term, Homo. It refers to the genus name that is a assemblage of species and sapiens that is an assemblage of uh, sapiens that is a species name or the specific epithet species name is known as specific epithet what does species name is known as species name is known as specific epithet in the chat box, you can see the term specific epithet. So, hope the binomial nomenclature is clear. That is Manco, Mangifera indica. When hand, when it is typed, when the scientific names are typed, it should be italics. Italic. It should be in italic. That is, it should be somewhat in a slanting position. Lion, Panthera leo. Panthera is the genus name and Leo is the species name. L is, P is capital and L is small. Man, Homo sapiens, H is capital and S is small. Genus and specific epithet. Just uh, avoid the term species name, just study it. Specific epithet. That is asked for your MCQs. Second name is species, not species name, it's specific. Just study like that. Specific epithet. Ficus. Bengalensis, that is what Benyan is, Benyan tree, clear, clear, that's all about binomial nomenclature, so we have studied genus 2, species and genus, we have covered closely related species form family, closely related species form family, that is Solanum, genus Solanum, that is potato, Potato scientific name is Solanum tuberosum. So Solanum is the genus. Then Petunia. Do you know what Petunia is? I will show you. This is what Petunia is. This flower is known as Petunia. Petunia genus. Okay. Detura. What is Detura? This is what Detura is. I have just included pictures of those flowers in this slide. This is what Detura is. Clear with Petunia and Detura? 
so solanum petunia detura all these belong to a single family solanaceae the family solanaceae okay so look here at the ending of this families there is a term a c a c e Solanaceae, look this ending word. A C E A. Very sorry. Oh my God. A C E A A. In the same way, names of other families like Convolvulaceae. Convolvulaceae, you have A C E A E. So from uh, these end words, you can. Oh, you are just supporting us from IOSCOT account. Yes, IOSCOT account. You are just supporting us by asking the students to hit the like button. Very good. Very nice. Keep sharing and keep supporting. So, Solanaceae. So, these are by these end terms, that is ACAE, we can identify these all are names of specific families. And all these families, will closely related families, belong assemble together to form order. Order is formed by closely related families. So such an order is known as polymonials. So if you see this convolvulaceae or family convolvulaceae, look, all these are including flowers, right? All these are including flowers or floral characters. So the order including, together including convolvulaceae and solanaceae form Polymonials and that is based on what? Floral characters. Is it clear? Is it clear? Hope it's fine. And that, then these orders together form class. Group of related orders form class. Group of related orders combined together. That is together known as class. That is orders called primata, carnivora. All these belong to one class that is mammalia. Primata. Humans belong to order primata. Humans belong to order primata. Then carnivora. That is all of you know. Dog, cat, all these belong to order carnivora. All these are what? Mammals. That is they are just giving birth to their own offsprings and they are just milk feeding, right? Should we remember these examples? If I say no, you will just completely ignore it. Just have a glance on that. Because if a question is asked from this identify, which is the name of an order, you should identify, right? So just have a glance on that. So that if such a question is asked too, you can score marks. Okay. We have learned about all these classes. Then, so look here, order primata. From this, what I have discussed, like somebody asked why these monkeys or apes are following this a human. Such an evolution is came in case of humans. Okay. That is order primata. Then order carnivora that is involving all carnivorous animals, tiger, deer, uh, fox, leopard. All these things are under order carnivora. Okay. So this all classes combined together to form phylum. All class, that is class mammalia, mammals, pieces, that is fishes, amphibia, including amphibian, that is frogs and all. Reptilia, that is reptiles. All these comes under one phylum called chordata. All these comes under one phylum called chordata. Then these phylums combined together. This phy uh, what phylum just combined together to form kingdom that is kingdom animalia including all animals kingdom plant including all plants. Okay. What you have to remember is one thing that you have to know is what you have to know. You should have a very good knowledge on the order of this hierarchy. Hierarchical order is very important. That is whether you can by heart in the ascending order, that is species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, and kingdom. Or in the reverse order, 
what i am guiding you it is to study in the reverse order okay in the reverse order that is by you can study by a code kpc of gs kpc of gs yes humans come under kingdom animalia sure humans come under kingdom animalia so which is the highest taxonomical category or taxonomical hierarchy which is the highest taxonomical hierarchy it's kingdom because includes all species genus phylum family order class all these combined together to form this phylum right so this respective phylum together combined together to form this kingdom so which is the highest taxonomical category it is kingdom okay so this is the code kpc of gs reverse or that is a descending or uh, descending order of taxonomical hierarchy yes so one thing another thing that i have to remind you is that we are said this phylum phylum right mammalia pisces amphibia reptilia all these belong to one phylum codata all these are animals right so the term phylum term phylum is applicable to animals in case of plants it is division division the order is in case of plants the order is species genus family order class division kingdom in case of animals the order is species genus family order class phylum kingdom fine perfectly fine look in case of man the biological name is homo sapiens homo is the genus name belong to the family hominidae belong to the order primata class mammalia phylum codata phylum codata remember phylum codata house fly scientific name or biological name is musca domestica genus name musca family name musidae order diptera diptera very sorry dip diptera uh, diptera class insecta phylum arthropoda in case of mango we are going to recognize it as a plant that is mangifera indica genus name is mangifera family name anacardiaceae order sapindales class dicotyledonae okay and the division is angiosperm not phylum division angiospermy okay wheat triticum estivum genus name is triticum family poaceae order poales class monocotyledony and division angiospermy yes vismaya bal subramanian ishiga nisha everyone lucifer everyone is i hope it's perfectly fine this is a chart of ncrt taken from ncrt and we have discussed this binomial nomenclature too and that's all for the second lecture second lecture diversity in living world and taxonomical categories yes should we remember this too which one is that the table if it's in case of table no need of remembering that okay because the same thing that we are going to learn in detail much about all these classes and all we will study in about in animals in animal kingdom and plants in plant kingdom okay but you should should not nor it as i have said before you should have a glance on that some i doubt yes metabolism yes mm, fifth question of previous lecture twin characteristics of growth twin characteristics of growth are increase in number of individuals and increase in mass it is a statement from ncrt it is a correct statement it is an exact statement from ncrt that the twin characteristics of growth that is if an organism is increasing in what is it what is meant by twin characteristics if an organism is meant by increase in mass we can see that it is growing if it is increasing in its number 
of individuals we can see that it is growing right therefore it is the twin characteristics of growth and what meant by metabolism you have asked another thing about metabolism that is it is a defining property but when compared to cellular structure and consciousness it is less prior okay so that is metabolism we have said that what is meant by defining property of life that is if by analyzing such a character we should know that that is only seen in living organism such a characteristic is seen only in living organism whereas this metabolism can be artificially done in cell free system that is outside cell outside cell that is meant by in vitro isolated metabolic reactions in vitro are not living things but are biological reaction so they can be done outside the cell too that is meant by metabolism that is why metabolism is less prior compared to that because it can be demonstrated even outside the cell okay fine so question discussion of today's lecture will be continued in the very next lecture as the beginning part yes all of you do read the ncrt today itself till the topics that we have learned today page numbers will be informed in the group okay page numbers that is right before taxonomically next topic taxonomically before that you should read it okay so thanks for your patient listening thank you all thanks from my part do hit the like button do share it with your friends and do subscribe bio points in the world of bio so it's me signing out from your favorite and my favorite bio points in the world of bio bye bye